Welcome to this video. How do I normally start videos? Why am I so awkward this morning? Today I am going to give you guys a little, little what I ate in a week. Um, did forget to film a few things. Gotta stay on brand and fuck some shit up. This is a Monday through Friday, so not a full week. Good enough, five out of seven still passes. The emphasis of this video is gonna be intuitive eating and what that even means and what that, I guess, looks like, but it's so different for everybody. It's such a subjective concept. So anyway, we'll get into that once we do this. What accent was that? Once we do this, what night in a week? Ah, let's just do this okay roll the clips Alrighty. on monday morning i made a smoothie bowl i've been making smoothie bowls in the morning because it's hot as fuck in la so you saw there i had a whole banana an acai packet a bunch of mixed frozen mixed berries some soy milk and some maple syrup i topped it with granola and coconut for lunch i had leftovers of this mac and cheese that i made the night before upton's naturals mac and cheese that i just made i added i cut up three Eve's veggie hot dogs and a bunch of frozen peas and I cooked them all together. I had half for dinner the night before and then half for lunch at work on Monday. I just didn't take any video footage of it. Then for dinner, I made Mexican bowls. I made enough for dinner that night and lunch the next day. That's kind of how I roll on the weekdays typically. That has rice, beans, tomatoes, corn, peppers, salsa, and avocado. Then I had a so delicious ice cream sandwich later that night and I totally forgot to take a video footage recording thing of it. Then Tuesday morning I had the exact same smoothie bowl for breakfast that I had the day before. Then I was at work and I got kind of hungry before lunch so we have all of this amazing snack table at work and I had some pretzels. Then I had the leftovers that I had made the night before of that Mexican bowl, very yummy. Then I got hungry again. For some reason I was super hungry on Tuesday. I don't know why. So I had a peach and some skinny pop. Then I had an impromptu dinner with my family. We went to a Mexican restaurant and I had some veggie tacos with, I just ordered the veggie tacos with no cheese and a side of refried beans and rice. Wednesday, I forgot to fill my breakfast before I ate it, but it was two pieces of bread with a whole avocado and some sriracha. Whoops. Then, because I had gone out to dinner the night before, I didn't have lunch prepared, so I went out to lunch this day and I grabbed a, I think it's called a Santa Fe crispy chicken sandwich from Veggie Grill. It's vegan, obviously. I don't like onions, so I took them off and that was super yummy. I get that sandwich every time I go there. It's my favorite thing they have. Then, on Wednesday night, I actually had time to make some dinner, so I decided to make a lentil uh, bolognese type thing. Um, I feel like I've made this before and I always make it a little different every time because I don't really have a recipe for it. So I just kind of make do with what I got. So I had, you know, garlic and olive oil, tomato sauce, basil, red chili flakes, salt, pepper. Then I added like a cup of lentils and some water in there and I just let that boil for like 20 minutes or simmer for 20 minutes. Then I made a whole box of linguine. And once the stuff was finished, the lentils were finished cooking, I added the lentils to the linguine and I had some for dinner and then I'm packing up some for lunch the next day. Remember that because of course I forgot to take video footage when I ate that. And I topped it with a bunch of vegan Parmesan cheese from Follow Your Heart. Then I ate all of that and I was still hungry so I had some seconds, topped it with more vegan Parmesan, yes, seconds. <laughs> Thursday morning, I made the exact same smoothie bowl. Soy milk, bananas, acai, frozen berries, maple syrup. Topped it with granola. Very yummy. Thursday, I had leftovers of that lentil bolognese. As you saw me do, but I forgot to take footage. Oh well. For dinner, I made a big old, that's actually a sweet potato, it's just a white sweet potato. Big old white sweet potato, topped it with a whole avocado, a bunch of nooch, a bunch of hot sauce, and some chili lime seasoning. It was a delicious. My favorite thing in the world is to just eat potatoes. Friday morning, I made avocado toast again. I actually remember to film it this time. That's what it looks like. Two pieces of bread, whole avocado. Then I went out to lunch this day because I just felt like it. And the office was going to this place called Bay Street Deli, I think, or Bay City Deli. And I had a veggie sub. It was pretty good. 
Then I got home, I was really hungry, so I ordered this whole pizza from Sage Vegan Bistro. Um, I didn't know I was gonna eat the whole thing, but... Uh, what are you gonna do? I actually ate it in like 10 minutes. <laughs> Apparently I was hungry, I don't know. I didn't have any snacks that day. And that was what I ate this week. Now that you have a little bit of an idea of what an average week looks like for me, and I would say that was like a pretty average week. I got a healthy mix of like me actually cooking for myself versus me getting takeout or going out to eat. I would say that's pretty much like the average hmm, ratio of how often I do each of those. So now I want to talk a little bit about eating intuitively and what that even means. When you're recovering from an eating disorder, after you recover, they tell you that the end goal is that you can transition to intuitive eating. When I was first starting recovery, I was so excited to get to that point. I thought I knew what that was and I really, really wanted to get to a place where I could trust my body completely. But now I'm here and I have gone through recovery and I guess transition to intuitive eating and let me tell you I learned a lot. Mainly what I learned was that my expectations were vastly unrealistic. My expectations were not at all based on me, myself, and I, but were more based on a picture-perfect Pinterest version of what I thought I wanted my relationship to food to be. Relationship with food to be. <laughs> Let me start with the most important lesson that I learned. Recovery is all about the journey and not about the finish line. That can be applied to so many things in life, but holy crap is it so important to apply it to recovery. If you try and rush your recovery to get to this point of intuitive eating or become impatient with eating the minimum calorie intake and you just decide you're okay and you can jump to intuitive eating, then you lose all your progress. It is impossible to try and eat intuitively before you've fully recovered because A, you really don't really understand what intuitive eating even is yet and B, you're not fully recovered. Your brain has not unlearned the restrictive pattern. So any attempts at intuitive eating will fail. It's nice to be excited about what your life is going to look like outside of your eating disorder and even outside of your recovery, but don't rush the process. Okay, so how did I do it, right? How did I transition to intuitive eating? Well, I really don't know, to be honest. I really, really wish that I could give you easy to follow steps or tips like um, not eating in front of the computer or TV or chewing your food with intention, but I don't do any of those things. None of those things that you often hear for intuitive eating are things that I do, yet I eat intuitively. So I honestly, in fact, think that a lot of those intuitive eating tips are so ridiculous. Like talk about overthinking your food. Food is just food. What? Who gives a fuck how you eat it as long as you're eating it in a way that makes you happy? What happened for me was that I was eating a minimum of 3,000 to 3,500 calories a day for my recovery for almost a year. When after a few months I realized, oh, I haven't gained any more weight. And I also was just kind of like, oh, all of my weird anxieties about food and body weight and exercise and all that guilt is gone. I just kind of like realized it after a few months of already living that way. So I was just kind of like, oh fuck, I guess this is my set point or whatever, which is a realization that I actually made after a few months after I actually hit my set point, which was actually technically my overshoot, but I didn't know that at the time. And also it didn't really fucking matter to me at that point and still doesn't. So anyway, I just kind of made this realization and instead of like being all excited or whatever, I was so to the point in my recovery where I was just like, okay, well, whatever. I guess what I'm doing is working. So I didn't change anything at all. I didn't start eating less. I didn't freak out about whatever intuitive eating I was supposed to switch to. I was just like, whatever I'm doing right now is clearly working. And what I had been doing was eating a minimum of 3000 to 3,500 calories. So I just kept doing that. The only change I made was that I stopped counting the calories because I was like, why? What's the point now? That's the only change I made. And that's how I've eaten ever since. Because of the way I recovered, I taught myself how to eat without restriction. To eat limitlessly and whatever I want without judgment. I learned that feeling full or overfull was not a bad thing. 
It was nothing to feel guilty about and it was totally common and normal. I eat what I want, whenever and whatever I want. No judgment, just food. No numbers, just satisfaction. And to me, intuitive eating is just that. There is no such thing as perfect eating. There are no hard and fast rules to follow. I just eat what I want in the moment and there is no possible way to mess that up. You know what, I said there were no rules, but there are actually a few rules. Don't ignore hunger, don't restrict, don't allow yourself to feel any guilt, and don't put labels like good, healthy, bad, junk, or whatever on food, because it doesn't matter. I've been eating this way for three years and I plan on eating this way for the rest of my life. It's served me well and not only am I still alive, but I'm thriving. That's what intuitive eating means to me. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, hello, my name is Rachel. This is Ladle by Ladle. I make videos on body positivity, self-love, intuitive eating, eating disorder recovery, and veganism, and I'd love to have you with me. So, if you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you'd like a more personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with me, or to get your personal recovery questions asked, make sure you head on down to my Patreon to see what programs and offers I have available there. And I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye.